Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial on Struts 2. In this tutorial, we're going to do a couple of things. One is we will add a business service to our Struts 2 application. And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to take our first look at Struts 2 tags. So let's get started. I'll start by adding a business service. The previous uh, attempt that we made to create a Struts 2 application was a very simple attempt. We had a Struts 2 XML, we had an action class, and we had a JSP. Both the action class as well as the JSP were printing out static hard-coded messages. So the first thing that we want to change in this attempt is we want to change the action class's static message to instead call a business service and the business service is going to return a response and the action class is going to print that. So we are still not worried about the JSP. We're going to take the action class. We're going to make a call to a separate class, a separate method, which is our business service method. And then our business service method is going to return some value and the action class is going to print that value. So here's my Eclipse ID. This is the project that we created in our previous tutorials starts to start it I can as well create a new one I could use the old one but uh, we haven't done a lot in that so it's just as easy to create a new one so I'll create a dynamic web project I'll call this tutorial finder so this is an application that finds tutorials that you want online so let's click next I want a web.xml I'll call the web content as just web and finish. Okay, so I have my tutorial finder project over here. I'll go to properties and I will add the struts libraries. I'll say add library, user library, struts to finish. And while we are at the properties, we'll do the deployment assembly. We'll add Java build path entries configuration so that this gets bundled into our war. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll just quickly copy the struts.xml from my previous project into the src folder and we'll use the same tutorial action. So we have a get tutorial that calls tutorial action. In the case of a success, it goes to success.jsp. In the case of a failure, it goes to failure.jsp. And in my source, I'll create a new class. This is tutorial action. finish and the only method that I need to have over here is a public string execute now this method will ideally need to call our business service so in our earlier example we were printing a hard-coded message over here instead what would need to happen is this place would have a call to a business service method and then the business service method would return a response and you know the action class can do what it wants with it. So let me create a business service class. So I'll create it in the source. I want to create a class. I'll call this the tutorial finder service. And I'll keep this inside the service package. I'll finish. So the tutorial finder service can declare any any methods that it wants. For this example, what I'll do is I'll declare a method that finds the best tutorial website. And I'll call this get best tutorial site. So the objective of this method is to return the best tutorial website 
available online and it returns a string which is the name of the website. Uh, ideally there should be some kind of a complicated analysis engine here that checks what is the best tutorial website but for our example what I'll do is I'll return Java Brains since we already know. Okay so this is the business service method that uh, the action class would call. So what should happen here is in this execute method, I need to call the method of the business service. So the way to do that is first let me save this. The way to do that is of course having an instance of the tutorial finder service in the action class. Uh, in this example, what I'll do is I'll create a new tutorial finder service. I'll create an instance using the new operator, but it's not really recommended. First of all, it's better to have an interface and then an implementation. And uh, the action class would actually call methods of the interface and not the actual implementation. And this is really an ideal candidate for using Spring dependency injection. So you can have an interface declared over here as a member variable, and then it gets injected with the instance of the implementation by the Spring engine. So, but for this example, I'll just create a new. So I'll say tutorial find a service. Tutorial find a service equals new tutorial find a service. Okay, so now I have a local variable, which is an instance of the service. So I can use this local variable to call the method. So I can use this, get best tutorial site, and I'll get the result of this business service. So I'll have a string best tutorial site equals this method and then I can do a sysout and I can print the output that we've got over here and return success. Remember whatever we do in the execute we have to return a string because the execute expects a string return type and the string that we need to return here is actually an indicator about what JSP the struts framework needs to redirect you to after this execution. So this success is actually tied to the success return in the struts to XML. So this success will lead to success.jsp. So what I'm saying by return success here is I want the execution to complete executing this and then when it returns it needs to redirect to success.jsp. Okay, so now we are done with this execute method. Let's save this. We are returning a success which expects success.jsp. Let's create that JSP. So I created in the web folder. Let's say new other JSP file. I call this success JSP. I'll create a title here and a body which says business service executed. Save. It's still a hard coded message for now. We're just using the business service for printing out a sysout in the action class. So now this is done. The last step is in the web.xml we need to tell this application that this is a struts2 application. The struts2 filter should take over the flow of control. So again, I'm going to use the previous web.xml for this. I have a filter and a filter mapping. I'm just going to copy this. And paste it here. So what this is essentially doing is declaring a struts2 filter and mapping it to all URL requests so that any request we make to the application, Struts2 is going to take over. Okay, so now let's save this and we are ready to run. So let's run this. Let's say run as run on server. I have the server running already, so I'll just say restart server. 
it's going to deploy, restart, and it'll use the default URL, which we don't have anything mapped to for now. So we'll use the actual URL that we have mapped. So that is the tutorials namespace and the git tutorial, and of course appended with a dot action. So let's call that tutorials for the namespace, get tutorial, and the dot action default suffix. And there you go. We have the Java brains text output and it's redirected to the JSP. It doesn't look very different from what we've did earlier, but what we're actually doing differently is instead of a simple hard-coded message, we are actually calling a business service. And the business service can have any number of methods of varying complexities. It could connect to the database and pull up results. And uh, that's how the action class will get information about the results itself. It could be a set of a list of records and this method would probably return a list of records and the action class would get hold of that list of records. Okay, so this is fine, but what we are doing is actually printing out to the logs. We are not really displaying the output over here. This is still a static message. And uh, since it's a web application, we will need to display the message in the browser. We cannot display it in the logs. The user will not be able to see it. So we'll now look at how to actually display this message, the Java Brains message that we have in our action class. We'll look at how to display it in the JSP. This is going to be our first look at JSP tags. I'm sorry, stretch to tags. And there are a lot of things we need to learn to really master this. Uh, we will just look at a simple way of displaying this. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to describe in detail what's happening behind the scenes. Okay, so now this is our string, right? I'm going to remove this printl and we don't need that. We're going to print this to the JSP. So we have a string which is initialized with the output of the business service. Now, how do I print this string in our JSP, in this JSP, right? I'll need this string in this JSP. Of course, one way to do this is to keep that value of the string in a session and then access that from the session in the JSP. That's how we would typically do it if we're using servlets and JSP. But that is not really a good idea when we're using struts too. And again, I'll talk about why we need to avoid using all the session and the request scopes uh, and the objects in uh, a struts2 application. But for now, let's keep that aside. And we are not going to use a uh, session to carry over data from an action to a JSP. With that aside, let's look at how we can transfer this data. The first thing that I will have to do to move this string, not really move, to display that string in the JSP is to make this a member variable. Because look what's happening. I'm having this as a local variable. So by the time this closing brace is encountered, the string is gone. This is no longer there because it's it has local scope inside this public. So what I'll need to do first is to have a member variable of this action itself. It cannot be a local variable because if it's a local variable, it's there only inside this execute. It cannot go to the JSP in any way. So what I'll do is I'll move this outside. I'll have a member variable and I'll call this private so that it gives me getters and setters option so I create the getters and setters for this right so this is a simple uh, member variable that has a getter and a setter okay so now this is exposed to the outside world now it's not available only in the tutorial action it's available in to the outside world as well so I'll take this output of the business service and set it to this variable so I'll say set I'll call the setter I can I can use the variable as well but setter is always a good practice so I'm setting 
the output of this business service into this member variable. So once the execute method completes, this variable will have the output of this business service. Well, this is fine, but again, we do not know how to get that value because we do not really have a handle to this object, the tutorial action object. In order to get this, in order to do a get best tutorial site, you would need uh, a tutorial action object, right? The one that has the execute method run. Uh, we do not have that over here, but I will use a struts2 tag that does the magic behind the scenes and that can give us this get best tutorial site, the getter. And uh, we'll just put the tag over here and then we'll look at what is the magic that struts2 does behind the scenes in the next tutorial. And as you know, before using any tag, we need to declare the tag lib. So I'm going to do that over here. I have this copy pasted. I'm going to just paste this here. So this is tag lib. It declares a prefix because we need a prefix before using the tag so that the JSP engine knows which tag to call. And then the URI is starts two tags. Again, don't worry about this too much. We're going to discuss this in detail later. But the idea of using this is, since we have a prefix called S, I can use a S colon and it's going to give me all the struts2 tags that I can use. I'm going to use a tag called property. And this property tag is used to display member variables of the action class. So if you have five member variables, say, you can display all the five using five property tags. And the property tag expects something called this value, which is the name of the member variable that you want to print. So in this case, the name is best tutorial site. So that would be the value here. And that is it. Now this starts to property tag takes care of getting the value from the action class. It calls the getter and it gets the value and it prints it. So this is all the magic that happens behind the scenes. We're going to just try running this and see what happens. And then we're going to explore the details of the magic in the next tutorial. So again, I'm going to call this the same one. If I call this, you see here, the output is actually getting displayed in the JSP. So what's happening again, to recap the whole flow, we are making a call to an action. Now this action is mapped to a action class called tutorial action. Now struts2 takes care of running the execute of that tutorial action class. And the execute method has a call to a business service. Now the business service returns an output, the output is set to a member variable, and then we return a string which maps to a JSP. Now in the JSP, we have a tag that takes the value from the member variable directly. So apart from the fact that we need to understand how it works, we can obviously see how easy it is to actually transfer the data from the action class to the JSP. We don't have to worry about sessions. We don't have to worry about scopes. This is a plain Java class and a Java object. It has member variables, which have getters and sitters, just like any Java bean. And the JSP has a very elegant tag that prints the value of a member variable. So this is a really easy way to wire the action class, the business service, as well as the JSP. So uh, there is a lot of things that Struts2 is doing behind the scenes for us, especially when it comes to this thing. We are taking the value from the action class directly to the JSP. So in the next tutorial, we'll try to understand what's happening here. Thanks for watching.